Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR. And I've been asked from a number of people my thoughts on the upcoming 1D&D VTT, powered by Unreal Engine number five. And on the screen right now, the top is uh, a screenshot that is claimed to be from uh, a pre-alpha of the VTT for 1D&D. And below that is a screenshot from Demio. Demio, if you don't know, is the VR fantasy board game loosely, very loosely RPG that you can play on your Oculus Quest. So why am I bring, why am I comparing these two? Because I don't really know personally how much people need the above compared to a regular screenshot from Roll Twenty or Fantasy Ground, but I can see the appeal. I can see the 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 who needs your your, your who needs Dungeon Forge who. Who needs modular terrain when you can have it on a on a big screen? It's 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 not going to be three D, right? So now, what does this mean to other VTTs? Well, I'll tell you my personal thoughts on it. Again, I I say this a lot of times. I have no inside information. I have no inside information on this, but. I personally think if they want to do, and I say they, Wizards of the Coast, Wizards of the Coast wants to do a knockout blow and take a significant amount of the VTT gameplay traffic. They already are, most games on Fantasy Grounds, most games being run on World 20 or for 5e. So they, they're they looking, I am sure, to convert at least half of that player base and grow that even more. But how do you do that? Well, I would suggest that you do that by not just being uh, a VTT that solely works for one d and I would suggest you work your database to be compatible with all D&D. So if somebody wants to play original D&D, BX, Beckney, AD&D 1E, 2E, 3E, 3.5, 4E, dare I say it? Because these little sorts are OGL, right? Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2. Allowed to be played with the 1D&D VTT. And you make yourself the home for everybody, even though they play clones. You don't have to support old school essentials if you're supporting BX, right? It's already support the systems that you actually own, and you still find that they will corner, I think, the majority of the market. Now, what does that mean to? Roll20, Fancy Grounds, they have licenses for Fancy Grounds, I know, has licenses for prior editions, classic editions of AD&D. Right? The rule set. Why, why would you let that be on somebody else's virtual tabletop and not on your own? You're going to want that player base to be playing on your own. And if it can be 3D, I'm looking at that top screen there. A uh, bunch of skeletons. It's hard to see. I know it's small. But if you can get that kind of graphical representation easily done by the GM, and that's going to be a part of the problem. My experience, having tooled around with fantasy rounds, is that building a module for fancy grounds 
Suck shit. Honestly. There's a very few shortcuts. Um, but building one for Roll20, maps, fog of war, you're ready to go. You need something for the one d d VTT to bring people in, suck them in for ease of use. And not just the ease of use of bundling. I strongly, strongly, I'm a betting man. I put a month's pension down on this, if not two. That the game plan is that official Wizards of the Coast releases for adventures or adventure paths or whatever are going to be physical, digital, meaning was it D&D Beyond, slash VTT offerings. Get all your maps or, or your 3D content or your tokens. And maybe you can, you know, reuse your maps and your tokens and other adventures and other products or your own stuff. But you're going to get it pre-done, pre-hashed together by Wizards of the Coast. That is going to be the selling point. Now, here I am as a, I guess I'll call it classic D&D player. Uh, I play systems that emulate original D&D, basic, 1E. If you gave me an opportunity to run... I don't know, B1, B2. Uh, this one, it won't be the Slave of the Series, but that name is just verboten now. But, hey, I could run uh, G1 to 3, D1 to 3, Q1, Temple of Elemental Evil, right? You give me the product digitally, you give me the VTT, and you give me an engine that supports my my preferred rule set? Listen, even if old school gamers don't make up a huge part of the market, they are going to be an untapped market for this. If you can steal them and convert them to this VTT. Now, here's the other thing that I haven't even stepped into. But I think we've all seen the uh, high-end gaming tables that they talk about with the screen built into the table. You know, it's like a... 80 inch TV set, and you have that digital VR screen. Imagine if you have that digital VR screen, touch screen maybe, with the one DD VTT. Don't, don't mock it until somebody comes up with that idea and they market it. And yes, it would be high end. Yes, it not, won't be in everybody's collection. But yes, some maybe some game stores would even want that. It's a draw, you know. Those high end tables are always a draw. Just thoughts. We don't know much about it yet, but you can be damn well sure they're going to be looking to market this and make it a continual cash flow, not a one time. It's going to be subscription. That you can take to the bank. And when I say subscription. It may not necessarily be a pure subscription model. It might be able to get the, the basic version to entice you, but they're going to want you to buy products in their bundles and get the print, digital, no, not PDF, it's going to be tied to D&D Beyond, and virtual components to it. They're not looking to make things that are going to uh, bring up the ho- a hobby. They're not going to be doing something that's like, oh, we're doing this to support Pathfinder. If they allow it to play Pathfinder, they're only doing that because they want to co-opt all those players to their VTT. Interesting thought. Remember, the other two VTTs are system neutral, effectively, right? You get buy rule sets for it, download rule sets for it, right? don't even need a rule set for it. This is going to be a closed environment. It just depends on how closed they want to make it and what editions of their own game and variations thereof they want to support. I would suggest they want to support more, but I could be wrong. Folks, let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, 
No longer a pandemic. It's an endemic. Use your common sense. Other than that, be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice, roll them well. I will be back again tomorrow with the Random Generated Party. Uh, my usual gaming group. People like Rob Conley, Joe the Lawyer, Matt Jackson, Tim Shorts, Greg Christopher, other random individuals. We don't always know, but always a good time. And then uh, Saturday, Gamers Health, 8 p.m. Eastern, live stream. Got to keep you all busy. All right, folks. I'll talk to you later.